Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, this is game five of my 2019 New York Mets replay using deep drive baseball. I am basically um, doing a part of the game as a tutorial. As I learn it, you learn it, and I think that's uh, that's a great way to go. Um, I'm starting the game off from scratch. I don't know how many innings I'll play. I, I, I'm looking to play three or six innings. So I set up the lineups. Now you buy the cards, they come uh, PDF, and then you kind of click on the, the, the teams that you want to print out first. I print it, First I printed out the, the Nationals because it's who the Mets played the first three games. Then I printed the, um, the, the Miami Marlins, okay, because it's the second team the Mets visited and played in 2019. Now the Mets are five and one in the replay. No, excuse me, they're actually three and one. This is the fifth game. This is so it's they're three and one. Now the game I played yesterday was tremendous. It went into the twelfth, the thirteenth inning, tied at seven, and the Mets won at ten to seven. So that was a real exciting game, and I'm going to write that up and put it on one of the forums or a couple of the forums at least on uh, on Facebook. So, um, all right, let's go over quickly the lineups, and I'm going to get started right away. It's Brandon Nimmo in left field. He'll be leading it off for the Mets. It's Jeff McNeil batting uh, second at third base. Robbie Cano, second baseman, batting third. Batting fourth is Michael Conforto in right field. Wilson Ramos, the catcher, batting fifth. Batting sixth is Dominic Smith, the first baseman. Ahmed Rosario, shortstop, batting seventh. Batting eighth is Juan Ligaris, and batting ninth is... Jason Vargas. I had to pull Jason Vargas from his Philly team because that's the way you get every player, but they don't make, give you multiple cards for the same player according to what he did with each team. But one card, cumulative card, which is fine with me, at least to have a card with the guy. And uh, and that's how, how the game rolls, and that's what the story is. Hey there, John. How are you, brother? ID Jester. Doing well, doing well, guys. Good to see you. Good to have you. So I'm going to do a little bit of deep drive baseball. Now uh, I'm going to roll the, the way I do it, and I just find it more convenient and keeps my brain intact. Uh, I roll the two dice. I, I read the red first, so it's red and white. They're like percentile dice from uh, basically 0, zero to uh, 99. And um, it's going to be Jose Urena on the mound for the Miami I keep on saying Miami Dolphins, thinking Miami Dolphins, Miami Marlins. He was 4-10 and 10 with a 5.21 ERA in 24 games, uh, 84 innings pitched. So didn't have a very good season. I cut out these cards using scissors. I'm like, I'm like uh, Edward Scissorhands here, cutting cards left and right. Not my favorite thing to do, but hey, it's, it, this, this set is this, – this, uh, this game is fun. I'll tell you, this game is fun. So let's get started. Brandon Nimmo, so I can show you how the game works. Uh, we're going to read 0 to 49 off the batter's card, and then they have outs that correspond. And uh, you're going to read 50 to 99 off the pitcher's card, and then you have outs that correspond there. So here goes. The endurance is 9. I, I barely use that because I'm very cautious as to how – once I see that the pitcher is, like, getting in trouble, I start looking at it. But otherwise, I don't really worry about it too much. I know he's going to uh, see if I can get him to go into six innings, hopefully. If you look at yesterday's game that went into 12 innings, I must have used, like, 20 pitchers. It was nightmarish. It took me forever. Uh, I, I just – I think I, f I played an hour in the morning, and then I played another hour this evening to finish that, that game. It was a 10-7 to victory in 12 innings for the Mets. So the Mets are three and one starting off the season. Now, if I play them smart, I think I can improve on their record. They were ten games over five hundred, and I believe I can improve that if I use them cautiously and, and I use the right players at the right time, still maintaining the realistic kind of uh, usage. And here goes uh, Jose Urena to Brandon Nimmo. Yes, you did, uh, I digester, and I listened to the three uh, different broadcasts or streams that you have for. Deep Drive Baseball, thanks for doing that. That helped me a lot. And that's why I'm doing this for other people, if you're still here. <laughs> All right, so uh, 
Brandon Nimmo, back from the left side. It's a 70, so that's going to be off Urena's card, and that's a strikeout. So Urena blows it by Nimmo. Next is Jeff McNeil, another lefty, and that's a 24. That's off McNeil's card, and that's defense. So on defense, there's a chart here. There's only two charts, guys. There's only two charts. That's all the game comes with, these two charts, and everything is here, so it's pretty cool. So the defensive chart, we're going to roll it. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want that to happen because I don't have a lot of dice that color particularly. I don't want to use red because my brain is – all right, so 20, 26 is going to tell us to go to the error. So the one, the one side is – one side is range. The other side is error. So now we're going to roll one more time for the error, and it's 17. 17 is the check pitcher fielding rating. Pitcher fielding rating is, is a 4. So that's a pretty good fielder. Five is the best. One is the worst. 17 on a four is a ground ball comebacker, and Reyna feels his position, throws out McNeil for out number two. Just like that. And it's Robbie Cano, one of my favorite players of all time, particularly when he was with the Yankees. I mean, his skills have deteriorated. Zero one, that's going to be in the deep drive zone. So that's where you want to be, right? So that's a deep drive for Robinson Cano. Gets a hold of one and drives it deep to uh, right center field where Cano hits most of the balls. Now we're going to roll and see what that becomes. There's a little deep drive box here. It's going to be a 24, and that's going to be a 3. And that's a deep fly ball, not right center field, but left center field. And it's caught at the track by Curtis Granderson. So I spoke too soon. It's a fly ball, deep fly ball, but it's caught. Marlins Park is not a home run hitter's park. So this is uh, this is blows my mind here because there are no park deep drives here. Yeah, it's all fly ball, fly ball outs. So I guess I'm not exactly sure how you would hit a home run in this park, to be honest with you. Because Marlins Park – because if, if it lands on – oh, I think – I see how you would do that. Wait a second. You have to roll again here. Wait a second. I did this wrong. Okay, so I see what I did. 24, and that's a home run. That's a – wait a second. Yeah, that's a home run. So – let me let me go over this. So I rolled a 24, but I have to look at the park. So so once I end up on the deep drive and there's a symbol there, then I have to roll right for the for the park. And I don't think I did that. I rolled the deep drive. So this is going to be a 24. Now I have to roll for the park, and that's where I roll the third die. Well, I could use that one, but the that. So basically now I'm rolling on the park, and it's a 13, and it is in the park. So now the 5 becomes a fly ball center field. You look on the park. So, so if, I was, if, I would have, if I would do it the way I was doing it, I wouldn't hit any home runs because it would always be an out in the park. Okay, so – there's a space between 0 to 19, and then between 0 to 19 and 80 to 99, anything that falls into that range will be a home run off these batters. So basically it's a fly ball to deep center field, and uh, center fielder Lewis Brinson is there, and that retires the side. So I will go over that next time it happens a little bit more cautiously. And that's – after one half inning of play, no score. Jason Vargas is on the mound for the Mets. Now, Jason Vargas had a 4.51 ERA, 7-9 record. He's a, he's a 36-year-old facing Miguel Rojas, a leadoff batter. So I'm throwing two dice, starting with a red. That's a 49, and that's an out. What kind of an out? We're going to find out. It's a 9. That's a fly ball center field. Juan Ligaris makes the catch one away. Next is Curtis Granderson, 33. Now he's versus lefties. He does very well with versus lefties. 
in the upper left-hand corner when the uh, batter has a circle that tells you that he does well against that side of pitcher. So in this case, which is unusual, I looked at this up, Curtis Granderson actually hit almost 90 points higher Okay, I just just tell them and give me information here. Now, on the original roll, if it's within the park, check the use of the park. Oh, so you're saying okay, okay, okay. So basically, hold on a second. Let me let me figure this out. Uh, I don't even know where I am. So all right, so let's go back to talking about that. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So. So in the first roll, so if it's if 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 it's a deep drive, I got to roll off this this square, right? I got to roll off this square. So then I'm going to throw three dice, and it'll be a a sixty one, let's say sixty one. And then if it's in the park, then I would read off the park. If it's not in the park, then it's whatever it is. It's a home run or whatever. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah, I knew. I, I okay. Yeah, I, I threw myself off there for some reason. That's what I was trying to do. So so basically you look and see if it's in the park, then you're going to roll off the park. But if it's not in the park, like 0 to 6, like I rolled a 61 here, um, that would not be in the park. A 61 would have been a double. Right? So if I would have rolled a, let's see, a 31 or a 30, it would not be in the park and it would be a home run. There you go. That's basically what I was. Thank you, uh, ID Jester. Appreciate that, brother. All right. So, uh, and I was talking about Curtis Granderson. He has his left, uh, his his left batting side circle. That tells me that against lefty pitchers, he has a special ability. In other words, and he did hit eighty points higher versus pitchers throwing from his same side, which to me is unusual because it's usually you hit better from guys on the opposite side but not in the case of Curtis Granderson. So that circle, basically that's how they work in lefty-righty splits. Guys who actually, it makes a difference. So, so if you have a, a, a loogie in the, in the bullpen and you want to bring him in to face a lefty batter, he may have like a, a lefty circle. So if he faces a lefty batter, he's going to get the advantage of 50 points. So for the pitcher, basically you would manipulate it. If, if, if the batter rolled, uh, uh, for example, a deep drive, you could add 50 points to that and it would go up to uh, – well, I don't know. Wait a second. Uh, how, how would you do this? Oh, it would be on the pitcher's card. If it's on the pitcher's card, right, and you rolled uh, a deep drive, you would go – I, I, now I'm t totally confused myself. So I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to continue playing this game, and then I'll it'll come back to me how you add that up. But um, let's go to Curtis Granderson here real quick, and then we'll, I'll figure that out again because I've done it a couple times. But this is this is like the third time I'm playing this game here. It's an 85, so that's going to be off the pitcher's card, and 85 is an out. You can see what kind of out it is, and that's a two. That's a ground ball to the pitcher Don, uh, to the first baseman Dom Smith. And he takes it himself, and we'll roll. And it's a two, so he's actually going to flip it to the pitcher. So it's going to be a three to one. 25% uh, of the time, it goes to the pitcher. So I roll an extra eight-sided die there. If it's a one or a two, it's going to be to the pitcher. Um, I, I'm not sure how it works here, and, and but that's what I'm doing for now until I figure out when they they flip three to one on here. So that is the end of the first inning of play. And let's look at that part in the rules here. Let's read that section in the rules real quick. Uh, okay. So when a pitcher advantage exists, the, def the defensive manager may choose to add 50 to any roll of 0 to 49. In addition, all fielders add one point for their fielding ratings. Note that that is uh, – okay, so I guess if I roll a – Oh, I see what it goes. Okay, so if I roll on the batter's card, there it goes. All right, so I figured it out now. Hold on a second. Let me get the Brian Brian Anderson facing Vargas. 
right? Brian Anderson is facing Vargas. So there's two outs. I thought that was at the end of the inning. It's not. I'm getting thrown off. Okay, so so um, let's say it's a it's a nine. Well, I add fifty. That will be a fifty nine, and a fifty nine would still be a single. But it's if it's an eleven, that would make it a sixty one. That would be a walk. If it's a fifteen, that would be a sixty five, which would be a strikeout. So that would be an advantage for the pitcher. That's how you would do it for the pitcher. Now, if it's off the pitcher's card and it's advantage for the batter, it would go in the opposite. So if, if you roll an out, which is a 65, you'd make that a 15 and it'd be a walk for the batter. Okay. So that's basically how you manipulate the advantage for the pitcher batter. You go from one card to the other. So let's get the pitch. Jason Vargas Anderson. It's a 21, a 21 on Anderson's card is a strikeout. All right, there you go. Now we have, uh, end of the first inning. Jose, Jose Urena takes the mound for the Marlins. Marlins owned by Derek Jeter. Michael Conforto. And that's a 15. That's going to be off Conforto's card. And that's going to be a walk. Now what you do is you roll to see if it's a wild pitch or a balk, kind of like you do in Strat. It's got to be 0-5. I believe, uh, what is that? I believe it's zero five, and that's in lineouts. Zero to zero five lineouts. Uh, no, zero to zero nine. Zero to zero nine. Double checking that. All right. So there's no wild pitch, no balk, and it's Wilson Ramos. Here's the pitch to Wilson Ramos. That's a twenty-eight. That's an out. What kind of an out is that? It's going to be a three, and that's a G three H. This is how you do. G3H, I believe, is going to be a double play with a runner on first, E, and it's going to be lead runner out in front of a double play. So it's going to be a 3-6-3 three, three double play. So Martin Prado to Rojas and back to Prado. Ground out, 3-6-3 three, three double play. I'm using a 9.8-inch nine, uh, 9 iPad with with uh, I score. Ah, there it is. Thank you, ID Jester. So the H gives you that, tells you if it's a double play or not. Good brother. Dominic Smith, that's from the left side. Now, he's he has that circle, his left circle, so he hits well against um, lefties. And I don't know if I have my phone so I can look that up. Ah, yes, I do. So let's check double uh, Dom, Dom Smith's splits versus lefties. Let's do that real quick just so we can understand how this works. Dom Smith, Mets. And then I'm going to check his splits real quick here so we can have more evidence of how this works. So if you were facing a lefty, he'd have that 50-point advantage. And I'll tell you why. Platoon splits. Platoon splits. Versus lefties, he batted 303. So did well versus lefties. And that's why you would bring him bring him in, I guess. Um, he had most of his at bats versus righties, didn't bat much versus lefties, so but he has an advantage versus lefties. All right, so Dom Smith is up. Let's do this. It's a 51. That's off. Urena's card, that's going to be a deep drive. So here's my chance to to fix fix it. So that's a 33, and I'm going to roll the extra 33. I'm going to roll, let's get 33. So off Don Smith's card, a deep drive, a 33. It's 0 to 4 park, so it doesn't fall into that range. 95 to 99 park, so that's a deep drive to right field. Back goes O'Brien to the track, to the wall. It's out of here. one nothing Mets. Don Smith connects and the Mets are up by a run here in the top of the second inning with two outs and you know that Jose Arena wishes he had that pitch back and it's Ahmed Rosario so that's how you play this game 35 I'm going to look at Ahmed's card it's an out Let's see what kind of an out it is that's I guess so five, that's a ground ball, second base. Hard ground is second. 
Castro flips the first, and that retires the side. Mets come up with one run on the home run by Dom Smith, and they lead it one nothing. Now we sh the Mets should be able to score some runs here against Jose Urena, who had a 5.21 ERA. Let's look at Urena's WHIP, a one almost a 1.5 WHIP. So <laughs> just just having a blast tonight. All right. Starlin Castro against Jason Vargas. 82 off Vargas's card. And that's a nine. That's a line drive center field. Juan Lagares is there, makes the catch. Well, Juan Lagares is declared free agency, so he will no longer be a Met. He's been with the Mets for a while, at least since 2014. So, and they lost uh, Zach Wheeler. He's also declared free agency. So unless they sign those guys, they're gone. I doubt the Mets are going to sign either one of them. Lewis Brinson, not much of a hitter. Guy batted 173, Lewis Brinson. That's a 0 6. 0 6 is a hit by pitch, so he gets plunked. He's on first with one out. Brinson, I'm not going to steal. I don't do much stealing or much bunting, but every so often. Pretty simple steal system. Uh, Martin Prado. So I'm going to roll to see if there's a wild pitch or pass ball. There's nothing there. That's a 98, so that's going to be an out off of Vargas's card. That's a 1, so that's going to be popped up. This is to the left side. McNeil calling for it, makes the catch. That's two out. And Jorge Alfaro now, the catcher for the Marlins. And that there's no, no wild pitcher balk. And that's a 0-2. That's going to be a deep drive. So now we're going to roll, see what happens here. It's going to be a 44, and a 44 is deep drive left field. Brandon Nimmo back to the track. Looks up. That's gone. Two-run home run. Jorge Alfaro connects and gives the Marlins a 2-1 to -one lead. I can't get too excited over that. Uh, Alfaro hit. Hit 18 home runs and basically 460 plate appearances, so he's got power. And that's a two-run home run, and the Marlins are up 2-1 to one here in the bottom of the second. Pete O'Brien, right-handed batter. Pete O'Brien batted 167, 47 plate appearances. This is the fifth game of the season for the Mets. Are we – Three and one or four and one? Uh, I think we're – no, wait. This is the one, two, three, four, fifth game. Yeah, we're three and one. This is the fifth game of the season. 81, that's going to be off Vargas' card. That's an out. And a zero is a line drive caught by the first baseman, Dom Smith. All right, so we go to the top of the third now. Jose Reina is going to face Juan Lagares. Then it's Jason Vargas and it's Brandon Nimmo. All right, 99. That's going to be an out off Reina's card, and that's a two. Hard ground ball to the first baseman. See if he takes it himself or he flips it to the pitcher. He takes it himself. Martin Prado is playing first for the Marlins. And it's Jason Vargas now. Jason Vargas, got to get a card for Vargas. He is a batting C. He's a C batter. So they got pitcher batting cards here. So I'm going to get the C and I'm going to put it in its place right there. So that's Jason Vargas. Here's a pitch from Arena. That's a 0 9. 0 9 is a strikeout. And Brandon Nimmo, 33. That's off Nimmo's card, and that's going to be a strikeout. And that retires the side, three up, three down. So Ren is looking sharp. We're in the bottom of the third. Jason Vargas will be pitching to Jose Urena. That's a 51. That's a deep drive. I don't know that 
Never. No deep drives for <laughs> for Jose Urena. No deep drives there. So basically, that, I guess that would be a uh, no deep drives. What does that mean? Do you roll again? On Arena's card is a zero to fourteen. Is a walk. So I'm not sure how to play this. So there's no deep drives here. So Rain is not a very oh zero to fourteen. I guess you would play zero to fourteen on this. And that would be a walk. That doesn't make sense either because it could have been an out. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Fly ball left field. Brandon Nimmo under it makes the catch. Yeah, you look in his deep drive. It's never no deep drive. It's zero to ninety nine is an out. There you go. Miguel Rojas. And that's a ninety six. That's going to be off Vargas. And that's oh man, I got a lot of these with. Eight. That's a fly ball to right. Comforto under it. Makes the catch. That's two away. Next is Curtis Granderson. He's 0 for 1. He grounded out in his first at bat. That's a 58. That's going to be line drive base hit to right. Michael Comforto plays it in on a hop. Gets it into Cano. So Granderson is on it first. So we're going to have to roll here. Oh, and Granderson had an advantage over the uh, – so Granderson had an advantage there. But if it would have landed on an out here, he could have gone back. So this is a double zero. That's a deep drive for Brian Anderson. Brian Anderson with a deep drive. Here we're going to go, and it's going to be a 42. A 42 deep drive is a double, and we're going to see Granderson is very fast. So very fast with two outs. We move one to the right. And that's going to be – he's going to score. So an RBI double by – two-out RBI double by Brian Anderson brings in Curtis Granderson. And Starling Castro. Uh, we got to roll once to see if there's any advancement. And then it's a 12. A 12 is going to be a single – and a 12 is going to be a single. And Brian Anderson is slow. So that's basically, there's two outs. A regular single, he's slow. Now he stops at third. Pretty simple base running system, which makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of shortcuts in this game. That's why I really like it. There's, I mean, there's just two charts. You know, most of the results are off the cards. Everything kind of makes sense, and it's so simple. It's 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 kind of it, it, I don't know. It, it it leaves me a little bit baffled. It makes sense, though. You know, so I think he he made me onto something here. Let's roll runners on first and third, and that's a what? Well, no, there's no uh, wild pitch or pass ball. That's a 78. That's going to be an out off of Vargas's card, and that's a nine, and that's lifted to center. Juan Ligaris coming in makes the catch, and that retires the side. But the Marlins are up by a score of three to one. We go to the top of the fourth. Three to one Marlins. Now let's calculate. Uh, we are in the second round, so he gave up one point plus four in three innings. That's minus four. All right, so Vargas is a nine minus four, so he still has five points. And we'll see how that develops as he goes. So, Rain, I'm waiting for the, for the Mets to get to, to Urena. He, I mean, he's not much of a pitcher, so it's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time of waiting it out. Here's McNeil, 36. 36 is an out. A five. It's a uh, slow grounder. 
to the shortstop. Miguel Rojas fires the first and gets McNeil. Robbie Cano now. Pitch to Robbie Cano, 72. And that's going to be a strikeout. Cano down swing. Next is Michael Conforto, two outs, 0 5. That's going to be line base hit to right. So Cano, uh, Conforto's on with a single. Going to roll to see 73. Nope. Wilson Ramos, the batter, two outs, 3 to 1, 0 9. 0 9 is going to be a single. And I guess that's going to stop. Unless I look at this thing. See, the single doesn't have a plus. Oh, okay, that doesn't matter. All right, so let's see what's his speed. And there's two outs, so I move one over. He has no speed, but I move one over, and it gives me a question mark. I'm going to hold him. So it's a single, and Conforto holds at second base. First and second now with two outs, and it's Dom Smith. Now Dom Smith connected for his first home run of the season in the – First inning, no, in the excuse me, in the top of the second inning, we're in the top of the fourth right now. It's three to one, Miami. Roll to see while pitch pass ball. No, Dom Smith. Here's the pitch, and that's a 42. A 42 is going to be an out, it's going to retire the side. That's a ground ball, second base. Castro flips to Rojas, and that retires the side. Four six. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. I'm going to do a couple more innings. So, again, I'm trying to explain everything as I go. So, I'm reading the red. Let me go over it again. I'm reading the red first and then the white. And I'm looking 0 to 49 off the batter's card. If it's an out or a hit, it'll tell me. If it's an out, there's an out section here on the same batter's card. Now, if it's off the pitcher's card, 50 to 99, there's also an out section, but there's also a hit section. So, uh, that's how it works. Martin Prado, he's 0 for 1. He flied out. Jason Vargas. And that's a 39er. 39er is an out. And that's a 9. That's going to be a fly ball center field. Juan Ligaris to his right. Under it makes the catch. Jorge Alfaro. Jorge Alfaro homered. He's 1 for 1 with a home run. That's a 94. That's off Vargas. And that's a 1. That's popped up. Left side, McNeil. He's there. Makes the catch. Two down. Pete O'Brien. And that's a 24. Pete O'Brien, 24. That's a strikeout. So Vargas blows it by Pete O'Brien. And that's three up, three down. We go to the bottom half of the fifth. Oh, excuse me, the top half of the fifth. Ahmed Rosario, Juan Ligaris, and Jason Vargas. Here's the pitch. It's a 63. 63 is a line drive base hit to center field for Ahmed Rosario. So he's on at first. Rosario's on at first. Juan Ligaris is up now. Let's roll to see if there's a wild pitcher pass ball. Nope. So here's the pitch to Ligaris. That's a 0-7. That's going to be a single. And what's really unusual is they didn't give him a very fast. Ahmed Rosario is one of the fastest guys on the Mets, if not the fastest. So 0-7 is going to be a single off Ligares' card. And a single. No advance, so Rosario is going to stop at second. I mean, no advance beyond second base on the single. So it's first and second. And Jason Vargas is going to bunt. Now, this is the first time I used the bunt chart. Hit and run chart. First time I used the bunt chart. Let's see how it works. Let's see. Does he have – he doesn't have a bunt. Hmm. Wait a second. Bunt chart. Roll as normal and find the code. Use modifier die to determine who feels the bunt. It doesn't qualify guys as bunters. Good bunters or bad bunters from what I'm seeing here. We'll find out, though. We'll find out more when we roll. So. Oh, wait a second. Roll as normal and find a play code here. Oh, so it's if it's a single, it's going to become. 
some sort of bunt. If it's a single plus or a regular single, if it's a walk, it becomes some. If it's a hit by pitch, so I'm going to roll on the regular batter card and then look here at defense and then an out. Okay. All right, that's kind of strange, but that's cool. So let me see if there's a wild pitch or a balk. Nope. So let's now roll to see on the. It's a 26. A 26 is a strikeout. 26 is a strikeout. So let's see, a strikeout, two strikes. So let me try to do it again. Let me see if there's a wild pitch or a balk. Nope. So here goes. He squares away again. And that's a 99 this time. A 99 is an out, kind of an out. It's a zero out. So that's a line out. And he pops up. Okay, a zero would be a pop-up. And that's what, that's what we roll there. All right, so I guess he pops up, and then it tells us roll to see who the uh, uh, who feels the bunt. Zero to one is the pitcher. So let's see. It's a three, so that's going to be the catcher. So it's a pop-up to the catcher. Look at that. kind of works out in a realistic way. All right, so it's a pop-up. Wow, that took a lot of rolls to figure that out. I don't know if I'm going to be bunting a lot. I don't bunt a lot anyway. So basically that's an out, uh, pop-up to the catcher. So Vargas fails to move the batters up, first and second now with one out, and it's going to be Brandon Nimmo bats from the left side, 32. There's no walk. Uh, there's no wild pitcher walk. And that's a 16. A 16 is going to be a walk, ball four for Brandon Nimmo, something he does quite often. And now it's the flying squirrel, Jeff McNeil, with the bases loaded. It feels back at this point. And we're going to roll to see. Nope. No wild pitch, no balk. Here goes. It's a 65. That's going to be a single. And Ligaris is very fast, so I have a feeling he's going to score for second. So that's the line to center field. Rosario comes in, three to two Mets, and I believe very fast for a single. No, it's actually how many outs? One out. If there are two outs, he'd score. So this is going to be a coach's choice. And a coach's choice is what I'm going to do here. So he's very fast, so I have an advantage. So I'm going to roll for coach's choice. I'm going to try to score him to tie the game up. It's a 96. A 96 is a runner is out. So he's thrown out by Lewis Brinson. So Ligar is thrown out by Lewis Brinson. So it's a single. One score. Scores three to two now. And Ligar is going to head home. Here's the throw, and he's out at the plate. Tagged out by Alfaro. Tagged out. So it's going to be eight to two. And uh, stopping at second is is Nimmo. And Jeff McNeil is going to. So it's first and second now. Now there should be a way to see if the runner goes to third, but I don't know what that is right now. I don't know what that is. There must be here somewhere a cutoff chart. There's a cutoff chart. So runner is out. Oh, wait. On a, on a single, if defensive manager throws home, a runner who started from first moves to third on the throw. Okay. So he does go to third. So Brandon Nimmo on the throw goes to third. So let me uh, – let's do that. Third base on uh, – advance by back. All right. So first and third, two outs, and Robbie Canona. So that was exciting. It's three to two ball game. We're going to roll while pitch or pass ball. Nope. And it's Robbie Cano. That's a 40 off Cano's card. It's an out. It's a one. And that's popped up to the left side, uh, excuse me, right side. And that's Prado, waits for the ball, makes the catch, and that retires the side. So it's three to two.
Let's go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. I'm going to play one more inning after this, and I'll stop at the seventh. So Jason Vargas is still on the mound for the Mets. And he's going to face the pitcher, Urena. That's a 55. That's going to be a single plus. Single plus never, so that doesn't happen. So that doesn't happen. So it's going to be, like I said, er oh, a deep drive is an out. Um, so a 55. So I don't know if I should roll again. This is the same issue I had last time. The difference was the last time it was a deep drive. This time it's not a deep drive. It's a 55, which is a single, but a single plus never happens off his card, I guess. But I guess it could happen off, off of Vargas's card. Hmm, not sure about that. All right, take care, ID Jester. You're, you're the best, man. Take care, brother. All right, so I'm still trying to figure this out here. Uh, so there's a couple of things that I got um, I got to smooth out in my in my game here. So let's try to figure this out the best that we can. We rolled a 55 on a pitcher's card. It says never. So then I guess it would turn into an out. Let's check. Let's check. Uh, you know how you do this. The best way to do this is check if Urena had a hit in the season. If Urena had a hit, then he could still get a hit. If he never had a hit, then we know it's definitely how to play it. So let's go Urena. Jose Arena. And let's go check and see. Pitching. Let's see his batting. All right. Standard batting. So he never had a hit in 2019. So he can't get a hit. So that's an out. So that's an out. It's a 55. It's going to become an out. What kind of an out does it become is the question. And I guess we're going to say, you know what? We're going to just move up until the first out comes up and say it's a strikeout. That's what we're going to do here. I'm going to find out more about that. So that's an out strikeout. We'll say it's a strikeout. Um, and let me just check this card one more time. Yeah, it just it would never happen. So if it never happens, but it's a single there, I don't know how, how what kind of out it becomes. I guess I would just, oh, wait, would I just roll for an out? But then it couldn't be a strikeout if I did that. That wouldn't be fair to the pitcher. All right, so I have to find out more about that. Okay, so we're going to roll here. 66, and that's going to be all Fargas' card. Miguel Rojas is the batter. 66 is a strikeout. That's two outs now. Back-to-back -back Ks for Vargas. And it's Curtis Granderson. Granderson's one for two. He grounded out in single. That's a 60. 60 is a walk, so Granderson gets on first on a base on balls, and we're going to roll to see if it's wild pitch or nope, it's 15. And here's Brian Anderson, 81. That's an out off Fargus. That's a fly ball, shallow center. In comes Ligaris, makes the catch that retires the side. All right, Michael Conforto against. I'm still waiting for them to uh, the Mets to tattoo Jose Arena, who's not a very good pitcher, but he's holding his own here. Three to two ball game. Got a pretty good ball game. That's a 44, and that's going to be an out off Conforto's card. A six. That's a ground ball to Castro. Castro flips the Prado one away. That's a 74. That's going to be it. Defense, so i got to roll on the defensive chart. That's a 48 on the defensive chart. i got to get these laminated with 10.10 .10 mil, and we rolled a 48. 48 is going to be a, let's see, 48 is to the first baseman. Let's see what Prado does at first base, what kind of first baseman he is. 
Prado is a four first baseman, so that's a pretty good first baseman. So we rolled a 48. That's a four first baseman. That's going to be ground ball fielded by Prado. Let's see if he flips to the pitcher, and he does flip to Urena covering. So that's going to be three to one. And that's one away. Don Smith. Pitch from Reyna. 22 to Dom Smith. That's a strikeout. Dom Smith strikes out. That's two out now. Oh, that was three outs. All right. Excuse me. That's three outs. So now we go to the bottom half of the sixth. That was fast. Bottom half of the sixth. And these guys uh, were looking at the end of their day pretty much. Let's look and see. That's uh, one, two. Well, he's gone five, plus he's given up more than one run. That's that's five, six. So basically, and he's gone around twice. No, he's gone around once. Uh, nope, he's gone around twice. So that's eight. So he has one more inning to give me. Starling Castro, the batter. Here's the pitch. That's a 13. That's going to be line base hit to left. Brandon Nimmo plays it in on a hop, gets it into Rosario. So Castro is on with a single. So Mets, there goes the Mets bullpen is up and about. Lewis Brinson. That's a 0 5 on Brinson's car. 0 5. And he's plunked. I think he was plunked already. He gets plunked again. So first and second. First two batters are on Martin Prado. Oh, actually, I have to wait a second. This is the roll because I didn't roll to check if there was a wild pitch when uh, Castro was on. So the 51 now is going to be a deep drive. So hold on. Let's back up. I forgot that roll. So it's a deep drive. 51 is a deep drive on Vargas's card. So we're going to roll here again, and that's going to be a 87. 87 is a fly ball to uh, left field, Nimmo. So that's out number one. That's much better for the Mets. That worked out. Oh, wait a second. Uh, back, back, single, fly out, went out. Held up, and it's Martin Prado. First, we got to roll, see wild pitch or pass or ball or pass ball. And it's a 54. 54 is off Vargas's card. That's a deep drive, and Prado's a little bit more dangerous. So that's a deep drive on Prado's card, and that's going to be a 45. 45 is going to be a double. Castro is average speed. Let's see what he does here. Castro on a double average speed. He holds unless I want to send them. I'm not going to send them. I'm going to hold them. So Castro stops at third, second and third now. Second and third. And Jorge Alfaro. Jorge Alfaro batted 262. Next batter is Pete O'Brien. Now I can go to my bullpen. I can go to my bullpen and bring in somebody like uh, it's got to be a righty. I can bring in Lugo. He went two innings yesterday. Peterson. He's been having an awful time of it. Gazelman. I can bring him in for an inning. And then I would get him pitching three. You know who I could bring in here? Familia. It's a little bit early for Familia, but I can. I think I could bring him in. Lugo went two innings last night. Gazelman went, I think, an inning. Everybody pitched yesterday. So you know what? I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let Vargas go. Uh, let's let's see. Let's roll here. It's an 89. No no wild pitch. No pass ball. Alfaro. Infield's going to bring the infield in on this one. 94. 
94 is an out. What kind of an out is it? It's a zero out. That's lined. And I'm going to roll zero to five. I believe it's a double play. And it's a 33. So that's line three right at the first baseman. Oh, with the infield in. Wait a second. I had the infield in. I think that's a base hit. Line drives with the infield in are base hits. Line outs become singles plus. Oh, that's bad. That's bad for the Metsies. Bad, bad, bad. All right, single plus Prado. What is Prado? Prado is a very fast, so he scores. So that's a line drive past Don Smith into right field. And that's going to score two runs. And that puts the Marlins up by a score of five to two. Holy smokes. Jorge Alfaro. He's got four RBIs on the day. Pete O'Brien. So that's going to be it. Uh, I believe that's going to be it. Let's see how many batters he faced. He's faced one, two, only three batters. I think I can still carry him one more. Pete O'Brien. That's a 95. That's an out. It's a four. It's going to be a hard hit ground ball. A G4H. I believe that's a double play. I believe we're out of the inning. G4H. With a runner on first, that's an E, and I believe an E is a double play. So the G4H has a four, Cano, Rosario, and Smith double play. Four, six, three double play, but the damage has been done, folks. The damage has been done. Jorge Alfaro comes up huge with the infield in. And hits one past Don Smith at first base to drive in two to make the score five to two. So we're in the bottom half of the seventh inning now. And that's good. This is where I'm going to stop it. So I hope my deep drive. Um, so there's one major issue that I'm having. I'm trying to figure out that when it, there's like a single against, let's say, a pitcher and it's off the pitcher's card. There's a single, and then um, it says never on the pitcher's card. What does it become then? Do you re-roll? Do you just go down to the first type of out? I don't know, because then it would always be a strikeout. I don't know. That's a good question. So that's one of the questions. So this is CP cards and dice. We're in the top of the seventh inning, five to two. It's already going to be 10 o'clock. I got to get up like at 5 a.m. tomorrow. I got to travel for work. So I got to get up extra early. Um, so I want to start, you know, getting comfortable and so on, and getting some rest. So I'm going to cut it short tonight. But I think I did a good job here, and I think I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with the rules. It's a fun game. And uh, you get the whole 2019 season is out already for $12. You can have fun with players and so on. Learning the rules. And that's it. CP Cards and Dice signing out. And I hope to see you guys again soon. And I hope to be back to this game tomorrow and start another one. Um, not looking too good for the Mets, but there's still time. The, but the actually, the Marlins have a pretty decent bullpen. So they're going to bring in start bringing guys in from the bullpen. I and right now, Rain is a nine. So he's a minus. He's gone six innings. That makes him a th uh, three left, right? Uh, nine minus six is three. He's given up more than one run. So uh, gone. Yeah, he, that's it. He's done. So Rain is done. Because this is the third round here. He's going to be – this is the, going to be the fourth round. Uh, the fourth time the, – the third, he's already been through the order three times. This will be the fourth because – oh, no, wait. No, no, no. This will be the third. He's one for two. So so he's, he's basically been through the order twice. He's given up more than one run. That's another minus point. That's three minus points, and then he's gone six innings. That is nine. So he's got to be pulled. So he's got to get pulled. Let me pull him. And uh, 
righty Tyler Kinley going to come in. Tyler Kinley had a 365 ERA. I'm going to put him in already. Tyler Kinley. Then I'm going to bring in a pinch hitter after that because he's due up next. But these guys only go one inning. Most of them go one inning. That's it. That's how pitchers are nowadays, you know. Anyway, this is CP Cards and Dice saying take care, guys. Uh, John. I just bought the 1985 season. That's cool. You know what? I'm uh, I'm I'm playing 1985 with um with the Yan with Status Pro. I have a Yankee I, and I'm playing it with Action PC. I'm doing two 1985s. One dice cards rather with Status Pro and the other one on my computer in my living room. And uh Yes, I'm playing. I'm replaying the Yankees, 1985, and I'll tell you why. There's an interesting story, uh, John, if you're still there. Um, I traveled a whole bunch when I was in my early 20s, and I came back. I came back to the states, and I remember it was 1986. It was fall, I believe, of 1986, and I ordered the '85 season. And I started trying to play it, and it was, uh, and I remember that. So, the, and and I never finished playing it. I never finished playing it, and that's why I want to play it now. And I'm playing it now. The times that I played stuff, I started playing stuff, and I stopped because just now with computers, it keeps all the stats for you, and and it's easier to do. I have much more time, and I can focus on those seasons. So, '85 is one season that I'm playing uh, twice. <laughs> one one with the Status Pro. And the other one, Action PC Baseball. So I'm playing it twice. And um, and that's the story. So so and and I think Don Manley had an amazing year that year. I think he hit 30 home runs. And they had a pretty good team that Winfield on that team. They had Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, not Jr. Ken Griffey Sr. They had uh, Don Baylor on that Yankee team in 85, but they had a horrible pitching staff nightmarish pitching staff like guys like Bob Shirley are on that team oh my god it's the night it's a nightmare who else do they have they have Ron Guidry but he's not the Ron Guidry that we remember that's that's for sure they have Ron Guidry they have uh, who do they have on that team that pitches they're all terrible they have a terrible pitching staff it's a nightmare but anyway what John uh, what team are you going to play uh, on the 85 what team are you looking to play Ah, Tigers. Okay, all right, Tigers. Yanks. Yanks play the Tigers. So you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. So when the the Tigers uh, face the Yanks, you can be you know sure that uh, they're not bringing much pitching, you know, with them. So uh, I can't remember the pitchers. They're so bad. Oh, you know who's on that team? The crazy the knuckleball. Necro. Necro's on that, the Yankees team. They got Necro. Doesn't have a good season. They have Bob Shirley who doesn't have a good season. They have a bunch of guys like that that are just, you know. But but that seems to be the history of the Yankees. They, you know, and once they, they uh, I don't know, it seems like they never have really, really dominant pitching. They never have, like, a really dominant pitcher. Yes, Rasmussen is on that team, too. He's a disaster as well. But uh, think, think about all the Yankees teams in the last 20 years. I mean, I... I they haven't had really, you know, they had Clemens, they had Mucina, but even those guys had high ERAs. I don't, Tanaka has an ERA every year, an ERA over 450. Even Andy Pettit had a couple of good seasons, but overall, he, a lot of high ERAs. And and they never had, like, you know, four amazing pitchers. Like, if you look at the Mets, you know, they had four guys that could really, uh, right around four, below four, and, of course, they have DeGrom, and they have – they had some decent ERAs, but uh, I guess it's a different ballpark. I, I think it's just too hard to keep a low ERA at Yankee Stadium. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. And Guidry. Yeah, Guidry was good, but uh, he, he wasn't the Louisiana Lightning of the late 70s. By 1985, he's, you know, the Lightning is kind of is dimmed a little bit. It's a lot of, there's like thunder, but there's not too much lightning. So by 85, when I, you know, I pitch him, man, he, he's not dominating. He's got like a 360, 370, 380 ERA. 
So he's not uh, he's not the dominant pitcher that he once was. But yes, uh, he is. He's you know he's one of the great Yankees for that time. That's for sure. Anyway, I'm gonna take care. I'm gonna take uh, off, John, and take care. And I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye, guys. CP cards and dice says uh, adios, amigos. Have a good night. Thank <laughs> you.